Here I am nine years ago talking about using shutter angle on the GH4. I'm not sure if Lumix added shutter angle before that, maybe on the GH3 or maybe on the GH2, neither of those cameras I had, but certainly on the GH4, when I found out I could use shutter angle, it was a no brainer. I set my camera to it. It's what I've set every one of my Lumix cameras to for the past nine years or so. It could be closer to 10 at this point. And the reason being as well, I've talked about that already. I made a whole video recently talking about shutter angle and why I think it's really unfortunate that more camera companies haven't embraced this feature, this function. It's not even a feature like something that you'd put on, you know, a masthead or a tent pole in your marketing. It's really just a basic function of how these cameras should and ought to operate, even though they're photography devices. I know there's a lot of people saying, well, they're protecting their cinema line and these aren't video cameras. But when you look at it, in the marketing, all of these cameras, whether it's Nikon, Canon, Sony, or Lumix, or, or, or Fuji even, they're always touting their video features, their video functionality, 4K this and 10-bit that, and now you got V-log or F-log or N-log or C-log or S-log. We got log, we're, 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 it's a log jam. We got too many logs and not enough shutter angles. I've explained why it's important, and yet people still ask, is this a deal breaker? And no, not really, but also yes, kind of. Shutter angle is one of those little tiny, tiny things that if you don't have it, if you don't use it, it's always creeping on you in the in the back of your mind and in, in on your crew, on your team, however you're shooting. If you if you're not using shutter angle, you always have to be thinking about your shutter speed because we're not always shooting the exact same frame rate for everything. You can't just pick up a camera and have all the settings ready to go. We're changing our aperture, we're changing our ISO, we're changing our white balance, we're changing all these settings all the time. But if you want to retain that optimal motion blur, something that looks pleasing, something that looks cinematic, something that looks as aesthetic. You don't want too much motion blur and you don't want too little. And the 180 degree shutter angle rule is a standard for a reason. It just looks more natural. I think back about 10 years ago when the Hobbit movies were coming out and they were shooting those at 48 frames per second and people were feeling a little seasick, you know, and, and now you try and watch them. I don't even think you can find the 48 frame versions of the Hobbit movies. They're just 24 on streaming. But shutter angle is really important to maintain that cinema aesthetic in your content if you want. There are times where you may want to use shutter speed, and I'm all for that. I'm not saying don't use shutter speed. I'm just disappointed that these companies haven't added the feature of shutter angle too. They've taught everyone shutter speed. Everyone's jumping through hoops to make shutter speed work across the board for every one of their projects. And it's so much extra mental math that when you're on set, you're trying to do production, you're making content, you're shooting a documentary, you're making a commercial, whatever it is, you don't want those nagging things in the back of your mind of like, oh, I've got to change this, I got to change that. There are so many variables. Did I format my memory card? Did I set my white balance? Do I have my audio? audio plugged in right to the right input? Am I set stereo or am I set mono when I want to be one way or the other? So many variables to calculate on every single shoot. They change from time to time, but there's one thing that I almost always want, and that's the 180 degree shutter angle rule. This is how people are setting their shutter speed constantly, thinking of this rule in their mind, doing all the mental math to make sure that their shutter speed is accurate for their frame rate. And it's something you have to manually change if you're not using shutter angle. In photography, you're picking your shutter speed based on motion blur because some photos you want to have the long streaks, the long motion blur, some things you wanna freeze action because photography is one image. With video, you're constantly capturing photo after photo after photo. They're moving pictures. This is moving images. And we want motion blur that looks natural and is aesthetically pleasing. There are certain situations where you're filming a computer monitor or you're filming in another country and you need to adjust to the you know, electric grid of, of the place and make sure you're not getting flicker and all that stuff. And there are features for that when you're using shutter angle, synchro scan, you can dial in by the degree to match the refresh, the flicker of the LED wall or the computer monitor, whatever it might be. And if it's easier for you in those situations to set your shutter speed, that's fine. But think of all the general times when you just want good motion blur for your frame rate, something decent, you know, not we're not shooting slow motion, we're just doing regular content, what I think most people are doing for, I can't say 90% of the time, but it's like the general purpose, the general way the camera ought to function by default. And when you're shooting video, for me, that's shutter angle. 
I think a lot of people are resistant to that because they don't quite understand the benefits. They don't see the value. They've taught themselves shutter speed, this goofy, awkward photography mechanism to make it work for video. And they're constantly changing it when they're switching frame rates and they're doing some funky stuff and saying it's creative and that's fine. You can be creative and have your fun and play around with motion blur. But really at the end of the day, it's a simple core function of just getting your shutter angle the way you want, because it's always, it's video. It's always moving. There's always some kind of motion blur. And if you prefer to have less motion blur all the time, you set a faster shutter angle. If you want more motion blur all the time, you set a slower shutter angle and it's not even slower. It's just a, a, a more open I, I'm kind of mixing terms here. But for me, 180 degrees is the perfect amount of motion blur for anything, whether I'm shooting 60 frames, 24 frames, 30 frames, 120 frames. I want my motion blur to reflect the frame rate. And I don't want to have to think about it because I'm already thinking about a million other things on set. How's the hair look today? How's the wardrobe look today? Or do we have the right props? Is, is everyone here on time? Do we send out the call sheets? There's so many variables. And if I can reduce one of those, because I know that I just always want my motion blur to be, you know, pretty regular, pretty normal. Well, that's a complete relief. It's a total load off my back, off of my mental weight. And I know that I could hand a camera to any other person and they don't, they're not even having to worry about their shutter. They can worry about their aperture. They can worry about their exposure. They can worry about their white balance. They can worry about their frame rate, all those things that we're changing. But I know if I hand someone a camera, I don't have to rely on them to remember to change their shutter speed when we're switching frame rates. You as an individual may always get it right. You may be perfect. You may be the master of shutter speed. But quite frankly, in reality, when you're working with a group of people, people make mistakes. And so is it a deal breaker that it, it doesn't have shutter angle and you prefer to have you know perfect autofocus in your a Sony shooter? That can be your deal breaker. Oh, for the longest time, Lumix cameras didn't have good autofocus. And that I totally understand that argument why that's a deal breaker. Uh, other times the deal breaker for me has been like a flip out screen, or maybe you're a documentary shooter and built in NDs is your deal breaker. All valid. Everyone has their own different preference of what's a deal breaker and what's not. Open gate might be an example of another deal breaker that just makes you say, I'm, I'm not going to shoot with that camera because it doesn't do open gate. And I'm, I'm doing this multi-aspect production. I need open gate. Fair enough. I might consider myself in that camp from time to time. Shutter angle for me is not a deal breaker, but it is such a big thing from something so small and so insignificant. This feature, this function could have been added to these cameras five years ago, at least, you know, like in the grand scheme of things, probably 10 years ago, <laughs> realistically, because it's not, it's not new technology. It's not some, you know, foreign concept that we just figured out. This is from cinema. This is from filmmaking. It's the way the film cameras were built. And so to neglect it, to throw it to the side, to say that it's archaic and outdated and legacy, and we don't need shutter angle anymore. I, I don't know where that comes from. It's kind of foolish to me. I think it comes from maybe a misunderstanding of shutter angle and how it even works to begin with. If you think shutter speed makes your life easier, I, I don't, I, you just probably aren't using shutter angle. I don't know what to tell you. And I think that comes from the misunderstanding of just not even realizing why you would even want something like shutter angle, that people get confused by it. They don't really understand it. They think it's too complicated when in reality, it is the simple, most basic way for a video camera to function when it comes to motion blur. You don't have to worry about it. It's not even a factor in your exposure because you just know you want the, the right amount of motion blur. And when you know that, it's one less variable to worry about. Yeah, I'm not even using my shutter to set my exposure like I am in photography. In photography, it's definitely a consideration, but for video, never. 180 degrees. That's what it's always set to. I'm changing my exposure in other ways with my aperture, with my ISO, with NDs, with my lighting. I've made a video about why it's not the exposure triangle, it's the exposure diamond. And you can go watch that if you like, because it is, there, there's a lot of ways to sh set exposure. And for me, shutter is not one of them when it comes to video. It makes things way easier, less to worry about, less mistakes get made. And at the end of the day, I think that's what we all kind of want. That's what I want. I don't want to hand someone a camera and open them up to the, the risk and the possibility of making a mistake over something that I know I want fixed, where it's not a choice. It's not a creative style.
for myself, I don't want to forget <laughs> and ruin a project where you go to shoot high frame rates and you use the wrong shutter speed and then you slow it down and play back and it looks really choppy, really stuttery. If you're shooting 60 frames per second at one over 60, that will look wrong when you slow it down. It will look bad. There are times where you might wanna shoot with a higher shutter speed for your frame rate. Like let's say you're shooting 120 frames, but you really wanna crank your shutter at speed like one over 800 or one over 1600 or something like that, just to really have super crisp, no motion blur. You can do the same thing with shutter angle you just use a lower value, a faster angle, if you will, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, something like that. And if that's your preference, and that's how you always want to shoot, to always have a really fast <laughs> shutter angle or a, a narrower shutter angle, I don't know what the right terminology is when it comes to degrees. It's probably not faster, but to think in those shutter speed terms, reducing motion blur. You can do that with shutter angle. It's not confusing, it's not complicated, it's not hard, it's not difficult. There's no math to do. You just, do you want more blur or less blur? And if you're shooting, if you wanna shoot beyond 360 degrees with your angle, I don't know of a camera that could shoot with like a 720 degree, you know, or something like that beyond 360 degrees, because that's kind of uh, artificial uh, almost. They may exist, and it certainly could be a possibility that could easily be added if you want the really long streaks, but just know that now you're, now you're getting into territory where you're messing up your frame rate. You're, you're intentionally shooting that way to speed it up, and I think camera companies would be hesitant to give you a feature that would sort of break your, your general purpose workflow. Uh, it, it certainly could work and would be fine, but that's an, a situation where you might opt for shutter speed instead to really drag the shutter, get those long light leaks. But these are not common, this is not normal, this is not regular. These are niche creative styles that you should be able to pick between both, shutter speed and shutter angle. It's so baffling to me because at the end of the day, I'm not asking to, to take away shutter speed. If you like shutter speed and that's what you wanna use, please, by all means, use it. I'm not, I don't want them to take it away. I like shutter speed from time to time too. I'm just wanting them to add shutter angle and the resistance to that, the, the feedback of you don't need it or you're an idiot if you're using shutter angle is, is kind of like, why would you think this way? Why would you want to not add a, a basic function that's been in cameras for a long, long time? It just hasn't been in this new hybrid model. Everyone's excited when they add 422 color or 10 bit and before it existed, well, you don't need that. Here's why 8-bit is enough. Here's why you don't actually want log. Here's why you don't actually... And yet they roll out the feature, they roll out the function, and then everyone celebrates and is excited about, oh, Nikon, Nikon is bringing shutter angle in a future firmware update. Hey, Sony might be giving you shutter angle in a future firmware update. Then people get excited. But when they don't have it, they say, well, I don't need it. Or do you don't wanna ask for some basic functions in the camera, wouldn't that make it a little bit easier for general purpose production? Less to think about, less to worry about, less mistakes that can be made since there's, production is littered with mistakes. Almost every shoot, some mistake happens, at least one, but probably multiple. And then you come back and you go, oh man, we messed that up, we messed that up, we messed that up. Or someone didn't do the right thing, you know, the right way. I don't, I don't want my shutter to be such a, a part of that where I slow down the footage and go, oh, they shot with the wrong shutter speed. So why not just add the function? Why not ask for it? Why isn't everyone on the This is, a, I think, a pretty easy thing to, to just all be on the same page and say, we all want this feature, this function. We have shutter speed, that's great. Do we have to really pay thousands of dollars more for shutter angle? That's not the case over on Lumix. Lumix has been doing it, like I showed you, for at least nine years maybe even closer to 10 from the GH4, and maybe even earlier than that. There were certainly cameras well before that in the camcorder days that had shutter angle, but I've already talked about all this stuff before. It's just so strange that whenever I talk about this function, shutter angle, it, it has the, the people, the loyalists, the enthusiasts who really get it. Once you use shutter angle, you're like, yes, I'm not gonna use a, a camera that doesn't have that. It is a deal breaker for a lot of people. And everyone else is happy to deal with the workarounds, the awkward clunkiness of changing their shutter speed every time they change their frame rate, leaving themselves and others open to the mistake of getting their motion blur wrong. It's so weird that more people wouldn't be asking for it and would prioritize other things as being more important because they're bigger. 
they're like, 8K, oh, that's more important. Well, yeah, but at the end of the day, fundamentally, if the basic functions of the camera don't do what you need them to do in a way that makes your job easier, it's constantly wearing on you, whether you realize it or not. The mental weight in the back of your mind of always having to set your shutter speed, it's not, it's not a big amount, it's not large, but it's constant. And that's why it's so irritating to me to use a camera that doesn't have shutter angle. We're on anything for Lumix for the past decade. It's been one thing, one less thing I have to worry about, one less thing I have to think about, and I always get it right, no matter what I'm doing when I'm making creative choices to change my frame rate. It's, I don't want to say life-changing, but it is kind of life-changing, it works changing, game-changing. It makes your life so much easier so it just seems obvious to me that everyone should want this added. I'm not, I'm not asking to replace shutter speed. Just add it as an additional function. These, these cameras are not just photography cameras anymore. The people making YouTube videos with their photography cameras, they're making videos. It, like how, how are we still having this argument 10 years after the fact? Yes, there was a point in time when you could say, well, it's just a, a, a camera for taking pictures. It's just for photography. It's not for video. And yet nowadays you have YouTubers making videos with photography cameras. The hybrid model works and is successful and is popular. And these cameras sell because they're useful, because they're valuable. And when you artificially cripple them by leaving out features and saying, oh no, you have to pay thousands of dollars extra for this basic function, that's when I get a little irritated. That's when I get upset. That's when I need to go make a somewhat ranty style video because it's frustrating to, to see beautiful autofocus, to see 4K, 6K, 8K, to see amazing dynamic range. And then to be told, well, but this basic function that is actually really helpful and really useful, you don't get. Here I am again, six years ago, probably, seven years ago, eight years, whenever I made this video, talking about shutter angle. I've been talking about it for a long, long time. And the more I talk about it, it seems like there's more people confused by it who don't want it. Really try and understand shutter angle. It's so helpful, it's so useful. I promise you, it will make your life so much easier. And any resistance to it is completely unnecessary. This is a basic function. All of these cameras should have it. Canon, Sony, Nikon, Lumix, Fuji, Olympus, Kodak, I don't care. GoPro, DJI, Insta360. If it's shooting video, you should be able to use shutter angle. It's that simple. It's clear as day. You're hyping every other single video feature. And yet this basic function, we're still acting like it's some secret, sacred thing that you can't have that unless you're a, a cinematographer. It's foolish.